All right, here we are in episode seven, and we're kind of getting close to final assembly. So uh, I got all the kind of the small miscellaneous parts that need to get some just kind of final, some weathering, some matte coats down, and then uh, make sure these are all looking good. Then we can start kind of going about installing certain things on the airframe. All right, so we're gonna start with the props here. And uh, to weather them in, I'm going to use this um, Mr. Hobby weathering color. Um, I have two colors here, grayish brown and this multi-gray. And it's going to be kind of a, a two-part two process. Um, so I'm going to use that. I have my props here now. The, uh, the uh, 202 is actually a, a three-prop plane, but I have four props. And I you know, weathered them all up so then I could pick. And I think I'm going to remove this guy. It's just a little bit too overly chipped and doesn't kind of follow the weathering of the other ones. So we just won't use that one and put that off to the side for now. Uh, the rest of these, we'll do this process. So um, all we need, I'm going to start with the gray. You know, this is a good shape. <clears throat> and we're just going to go directly out of the bottle here. I'm just going to take a little bit of this on this small brush. Uh, this has already had a flat coat on it, um, so it'll kind of stick in it a little bit better. I'm going to just get a little bit of this on the brush. I'm just going to kind of like get some dots of it on there like so. We're going to take a Deerfoot stippler brush, and we're just going to kind of stipple at this and we're gonna get some kind of variation in the black so it's not completely black um, I believe this was painted with um, NATO black if I remember correctly it was so long ago I'm not quite sure just putting, putting some dots on there lightly stipple at it And it kind of fades out the black a little bit with some different shades. So I'm going to do that on all of these. And I'll do it on the front and back. But for right now, I'm just going to do the fronts of each of these. Yeah, so just a little bit of add some dustiness to it. Kind of like so. So if you look at the back, I don't know how much darker it is than the other. So it just dusts up a little bit and gives it some variation. So um, I'm gonna do the back sides of these now. All right. So I finished applying all the Mr. Color weathering on there. So it it you know kind of stepples in, gets some tonal variation in the prop blade, some wear, um, a little bit of streaking is in there. Um, it just doesn't look black, which is good. Um, so after I did the application of the Mr. Color weathering products, I then gave it a coat of super clear matte varnish from MRP. And then all these little pieces you see down here, uh, also got matte coated so that they're all matted and ready to go for some assembly, some further like chipping and that kind of stuff. So, um, I'm going to put the prop blades off to the sides and then I will go and start to weather up the wheels next. And I'm just going to use some of this uh, MIG uh, 1604 uh, Pacific Dust uh, panel line wash. And I'm going to start kind of like just getting it. I'm just going to slop it all over the tire. Like I said, I'm just going to go all over this like so. like so. So now it just needs to dry and then once it's dry we'll blend it out and get um, a good majority of the wash out and then we'll move on. So the, uh, the panel liner has had time to dry on the tires so now I'm just going to remove it 
And the way I'm going to go about removing this, I'm just going to get kind of a stiffer brush that I have somewhere over here in my collection. I'm just going to give it like a wipe over first, see how it looks, and then I'll just kind of remove it as I go. So I'll start with this tiny rear tire, just kind of brush at it a little bit. Actually, since it's so flat, I'll start with a Q-tip. I want to push the uh, panel liner from the middle out towards the tread. That seems where most of the dust accumulation happens is on the tread. Um, it's going to be harder to do on the bottom side here. You can't see me. So I just have it laid down on my paper towel. I'm just brushing the wash outwards from the middle of the hub. And I'm going to lightly brush the tread. And for that, I'm going to get the brush here. You get a little bit of, I don't know how well that'll come in, but some dust. You know, like I said, I just want it to look dusty. I don't want it to look crazily like covered in mud or anything like that, just dusty. So same thing, pushing out from the hub to the tread. Um, so we kind of get that kind of like patchy, dusty look. Alrighty, so those look pretty good. Nice and dusty. Not overly, not over the top, but they're looking good. So what I'll do in a minute is I'll flat coat those so they're nice and protected. Okay, so off camera, I installed the exhaust stacks here. Um, the Edward set, they are handed. On the very front of the resin pieces, is stamped in left and right. So I just got those in on both sides. And since they are resin, you need to use some super glue. And I just used uh, this stuff. Arms Keeper uh, gap filling medium viscosity super glue. It sets in about five to 10 seconds. Uh, I just have it in a little pallet down here and I just applied it with um, a uh, toothpick and looks very good. Exhaust stacks are in. While I have this kind of out right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop off the canopy, which grab me a toothpick here, just give it a little pop. So I hope it would give it a little pop. Looks like I glued it in a lot more secure the second time. There it goes. Get that removed because we don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna go clean up this um, canopy. Luckily the overspray is pretty minimal. I'll probably chip up this sill uh, in a couple minutes. Um, but for now I'm gonna go clean up this uh, small part and get that ready and just put it off to the side. So. All right, so I got the canopy unmasked, and then I took a little bit of some Vallejo black, and I painted uh, the backside edges of the canopy frame uh, black. Now, my reference photos uh, of all the inside of the cockpit stuff I have all are restored birds or museum pieces, so um, all of their canopy framing on the inside is black. So that's what I went with, and I'm gonna stick to that for now. Uh, I did have a little bit of overspray in here, so I just took a uh, cotton swab, swab with a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol, and I just kind of swiped it all out. The good thing about MRP is, well, good and bad, is uh, it doesn't like rubbing alcohol. So um, you can go and pretty much wipe away any MRP overspray with some rubbing alcohol. So this canopy piece is all set. Um, I'm just going to place it in a small bin off to the side for later on for installation. Um, but that's in a good spot for the next step. So uh, I'm going to go put this somewhere safe so I don't lose it or break it. And then uh, we will move on to whatever I decided to do next. Okay, so when I got the fuselage put together, I left out the uh, quick boost, or sorry, not quick boost, the uh, Ultracast seat. Um, I just left it separate and we'll install it later. This does require some like manipulation to get in here. But basically the plan is I'm going to put some... I'll zoom in here best I can. So let me see if I can do this on camera. Let's see what happens. May the force be with me. Got some glue on here. I can't tell if my head's in frame or not, so I apologize in advance. I'm put a decent amount of super glue on this cardstock I, I put in here. Okay. 
Maybe I'll put the glue in the bulkhead first. Yeah, it seems like a better idea. So I'll put the glue in the holes here for the bulkhead, and I'll put a little bit of glue right there. Okay, so now with the seat, I gotta kinda go in at an angle, like so. Get it there. Get these in their holes, like so. I just gotta make sure that the, I know I'm blocking the view right now, but I just wanna make sure the seat is centered and sitting down on that glue I put in there. So what I'm gonna do is, so I don't mar the paint of the seat, is I'm gonna grab another cotton bud. Zoom out a little bit here. So use a cotton bud to push down the seat so I don't mar it with the tweezers. And then same thing if we're going this way. In there now. It needs a little bit of a nudge this way. There we go. Alrighty, let that do its thing. Okay, so that's been given a, a couple, you know, five minutes to get in there. It's all, let me start to set it up. All inside there, looking the part. Um, but yeah, so there's a little bit of space around it for the canopy to lay down properly. So the Ultracast seat is in, and like I said, that Ultracast seat is really well cast. I'm really happy with that. I'm glad that I uh, purchased that. So one of the downsides of the Hasegawa kit is they have all the gun ports on the top side in the fuselage. Um, in the molded parts but they do not provide you any machine gun barrels to put in it it's just an empty hole um so i got these off of sprue brothers these are master uh model works from poland i believe and they do brass uh machine gun barrels um for all sorts of subjects and these are the italian machine gun breda saf 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 7.7 barrels uh for the uh, nose so these can be a little bit fiddly um they are tiny and, you know, um, the good thing about these little sets is they provide you all the dimensions you need to drill holes and uh, that kind of thing. The one thing that is going to be an issue with these is they are far too long for where we need to put them. So we're going to have to do some drilling and then recess them back in the gun port a little bit. Um, so they come in this nice little baggie keep you from losing stuff. If I had a nickel for every time I dropped a brass barrel on the ground and had to spend a couple hours on my hands and knees hunting for it, I'd be a rich man. I could buy a ton of brass sets to replace them. Simple directions. It comes with the actual barrel and the cooling jacket and they slip over each other with a little bit of super glue. Um, and then it says here you're gonna use um, a 0 0.05 millimeter twist drill for the mounting hole. So we're probably gonna have to go a little bit bigger than that because it's designed to fit on, the mounting hole's supposed to go on this like nub right here. Um, so we'll probably have to go a little bit wider, probably the width of the cooling jacket and then recess it into the gun port um, bay. You know, that's, that's the barrel, that's the cooling jacket, and then they slip over the part yeah, so I think they go like, let's see if I can do this without. Yeah, so it goes like that. So that's one complete barrel, like so. Yeah, maybe I'll try this on camera, let's see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of white tack. I'm gonna take the barrel piece, just insert it in the white tack as a little holder. So I'm just using an X-Acto blade handle that has some um, wire in it. Um, and that'll be how I ap apply the super glue in, in a small amount onto the piece. So I have some off to the side here in this little dish. I have some super glue, I have some really thin super glue, some Loctite uh, liquid super glue. I'm just gonna take a little bit on here, get it on there and get my tweezers. He said, I don't know how well this is going to come about, but we will do it live. Okay, like so, that's one done. Let's 
same thing. Put the barrel part in. A little bit of super glue. The actual barrel jacket itself. If I can line it up here, come on. All right, and that's installed. So I'm gonna get that a minute to uh, dry up and then we'll get it ready for paint. All right, so I have the barrels in these uh, cross-locking tweezers just so I can hold on to them while I paint them. And then the first process, I'm gonna use some of this uh, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Metal Primer R, and I'm just gonna give them a light dusting over it. Um, I'm not gonna do it here at the bench. I'm gonna go outside and zap these real quick. I went outside, spray this up. It does have quite a, uh, a fragrance to it, definitely worse than any uh, of the MRP paints. Um, so I did go outside where there's some air and sprayed that. Definitely ran the risk of dropping that outside in the abyss that is my backyard, but um, I didn't drop anything. So that just needs to dry for a few minutes and then I'm gonna get some paints ready. And for this, I'm gonna use some Alclads. Either magnesium or burnt iron. Let's see which color looks better here. All right, gonna spray these machine gun barrels. This is Alclad burnt iron. The uh, actual machine gun jacket is perforated, so you actually want to kind of hit this at a couple angles so you don't get any of the brass showing through. I probably should have painted the barrel separately then glued it together, but um, it looks okay right now. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that color. That's a good color. All right, that's looking good. Need those to dry for a little bit. I'll probably also matte coat these so they're easier to handle, and then I can always touch them up when they're in the actual port. So, um, yeah. I need to do some measuring on these as well to see how big of a hole I'm going to need to drill uh, into the gun port itself since I, uh, I blocked them off. Um, so, yeah, moving along here. Okay, so I busted out the digital calipers and the hole I need to drill to accept these into the backing plate that I created is uh, 0.93 millimeters. So um, I'm gonna have to go dig through my various um, pin vise sets here or twist drill sets and see what I have that's close um, to that size. You can see I got those machine gun barrels in there. Uh, they show up ever so slightly, um, but they fill the void. Um, so yeah, I basically took um, a twist drill that was just a little bit uh, wider than what I needed. Um, so it was like 0.95, and then that just slid in there perfectly. Put it all the way back there uh, with some super glue, and it's in place now. So the guns are in, in place, uh, looking apart. The yeah, they're in there. So yeah. We can move on to some more assembly stuff. Okay, I've been working on landing gear parts and I got the main gear struts and gear doors uh, attached with the, the actual wheels. Um, the kit part has some locating tabs that are too long and too fat and they don't fit into the locating tab. So I chopped them off and then I just used this as a guide uh, and used some super glue to get them together. And then after they all set up, I gave them a quick um, coat of matte varnish just to um, flatten them down. So I got both of those going right here. And then the tail wheel got glued up as well, like so. And then on the actual airframe, I got these tiny little doors over here installed uh, with a little bit of super glue. Uh, the fit on them is okay. They're a little a little floppy, but um, you know, they're in there. They're just small little doors that sit like that. Um, so now I'm moving on to uh, get the rest of stuff installed here. So, okay, so I got the landing gear, the actuators and the gear doors in uh, very finicky. Um, so what I did was I installed the actual landing gear struts and doors here first got them installed, put them on a flat surface, made sure they're nice and square and uh, you know looking good. And then I installed 
the actuator arms, which had to be trimmed. So I cut off a little bit of both ends so that there's a like a mounting thing back here on both sides. So I got the thing on the mounting thing, got the struts down there, and then after it got uh, mounted to the struts itself, uh, I tacked it in with some, uh, to me, an extra thin quick setting and let it be. And then it got nice and hard, and then I glued inside here uh, for some support. I then uh, tacked in with some super glue the gear doors here, got those sitting well, and then these actuator arms were a pain in the butt. Um, they kept falling out and falling into the tub, so I ended up uh, loading up a ton of, um, to me, extra thin behind this, and then wait for it. I can move it a little bit, and then I, there's a little notch cut out of the door got that in place and I hit it again with some extra thin, but quite an adventure getting that installed, but it's installed now looking good. And then um, the tail wheel is installed and I purposely put it at a little bit of a cant. Um, so it you know, a little bit of visual interest. Oh, by the way, I glued the main gear in with some two-part epoxy. I used Bob Smith Industries two-part uh, quick cure epoxy, a uh, five-minute type. Allowed me to get the gear in there, get them kind of tacky, and then I could do some kind of micro adjustments um, as I went to get them nice and square and looking good. So that's what I used to get the main gear. And I kind of do that for most of my builds is I'll use some five-minute epoxy so they don't set on me right away. Okay, so I got the uh, nav lights on the wingtips uh, masked up so I can go ahead and start painting those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a coat of silver, uh, spray it in, and then I'm gonna give it a coat of the corresponding uh, colors. I believe it's red and green uh, for these. Sometimes it's red and blue for other countries, but we will take a look at the uh, directions to see what it says or take a look at a picture. Um, so I'm gonna do a little bit more protective masking on this so I'm not over spraying silver all over the place But I gotta be careful of the decals on the bottom here So so I'm gonna use some uh, 18 mil Tamiya masking tape for this and what I do is I put it on my forearm And this will detack it so I can protect the paint and the decals And then I just gotta be kind of aware when I actually airbrush the angle that I shoot so I'm not creating any overspray on both sides. I'm setting, setting this up on both sides. Oops. I'll do this to pinch this together. Okay, so I'll go load up some silver. And the airbrush this should be a pretty quick spray session here. Be right back. Just got some alkaline aluminum loaded up in the airbrush. And I'm just gonna drop the air pressure here a little bit so I'm not going crazy. I'm just gonna shoot off away. as best I can. Obviously I'm gonna have to get the tip here. Oh, the tip, the leading edge, okay. Now we can gently remove these masks. I'm gonna paint in the clear color by hand. <laughs> I just gotta be careful with leading edges masking. They always seem Paint is usually fragile. Yep, I already tore a piece of the paint off right there. Yeesh, I'm gonna have to touch that up. I'll show you that in a minute. It's not pretty. It's not even small enough to pretend it was a chip. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. You can see right here, I got some paint lift. So I'm gonna have to touch that up with some of the dark brown color. So um, I think I will touch that up first, then paint the uh, 
the navigation light. So, all right, so it's got a smidge of that color four in the color cup here. And I masked off the area with some bookmarks, which are uh, post-it notes. Um, they're very low tack and just making sure it's a little bit too high pressure. Just blending that in. Luckily, didn't go over the wraparound. So it's just right there on the wing tip. Like so. That should be good. Just remove my masks. So, yeah, if you have post it notes, they make great masks, especially for straight lines. So yeah, okay, that's fixed. Good stuff. So I'm kind of at that point in the build where whenever I do any airbrush work or clean out the airbrush, I always take my uh, model and I put it in the bin so it's protected and I don't get paint splatters and stuff like that on the model. And it's also that point in the build where you kind of need to check your hands. Like I found this silver dot on my fingertip and uh you know i had to go do uh like a walk around the airframe to make sure that uh, i didn't get any silver on it but uh luckily um i think i got that on there on my finger a while before i started handling the model so yeah just be careful at this point at the the end of the build where you know you're kind of like hey i want to get this done i want to get this done. i want to get this attached slow down check your hands maybe break out some gloves don't ruin things right now Okay, so I got that touch up taken care of. It's all blended in, looking nice. I might need a, a smidge of flat over it so it blends in. Um, and now I'm gonna paint the navigation lights. So uh, I got Tamiya clears, so I got clear green, X25 and clear red, X27. And I'm just gonna paint these on with a brush. Um, I'm terrible, I always forget what color starboard and port is. So <laughs> on my desk, like right over here, I have a sign that says left side red, right uh right side green or blue so um the reference pictures i show of the 202s is green and red so give this stuff a shake this stuff the cap always tends to get stuck on it so this handy tool is always useful has a little rubber thing to hold it and then this is like a key for it you just slap that on top give it a turn and it will unlock all your locked tops so we're going to go green first, which is the right side. And the key with this stuff is you kind of got to build it up in layers because it does get like tacky and it wants to stick to the brush as you apply it so I could airbrush this on but um, I kind of like to you know blob it on so it kind of gives the effect of some green colored glass give it a shake first Now I'll crack open the red. If I remember correctly, the red is super stringy. The red cover is better than the green. Okay. Avoid the green and flip it over. And then we'll do the top for the red. Okay. I'm gonna give that a few minutes to dry and then I'll come in and do one last coat over the top of it. So I uh, pulled the uh, 202 out of the protective container, I was moving around and I dropped it and I uh, busted up on the landing gear. So this is the aftermath of me repairing it. So I have this cross locking tweezers holding the landing gear in place while it sets up with some super glue uh, and try and keep the landing gear uh, at the right angle 
um, while it cures out. So, yeah, um, be careful <laughs> towards the end of your build. That's all I got to say. All right, so I'm getting ready to do some of the uh, aerial rigging, rigging, and I'm using this uh, model cast in uh, 0.13 millimeter um, line. And I think this is like Lycra uh, sewing line. Um, I also use Ushi van der Rosten uh, line as well. I just, this one was easy to get to. Um, so uh, when I was doing body work earlier, I pre-drilled some holes. So the first hole that I got going here uh, is this um, kind of like auxiliary line that runs underneath the main stretch. So I just put some super glue in here, ran the line, and now I'm just kind of waiting for it to set up. This is going to kind of go at this angle here. So I just got to wait for that to set up a little bit and then I can uh, start to work. So um, the next part I need to do is there's a, a run of line that goes from the top of the rudder here or the tail to this mast that I just installed right here. Um, so I need to, uh, a length of this stuff cut out. I usually cut out a little bit longer than what I need just so I have some working room. So I have a, a little run of it right here. I'm gonna get, I'm, right now I'm, I'm doing application with super glue with this um, sewing needle, which is very tiny and flexible so I can kind of pinpoint the glue where I need it. So I also pre-drilled a hole up here for the line to get into. So I'm gonna get a little bit of glue on the tip of my needle. I'm gonna get it into the hole. best I can, like so. I'm gonna grab the end of this and plop that in that hole. It's not going. <laughs> Okay, so it's in that hole, and now it's got to kind of wait for it to dry. It could use a little bit of kicker to help enhance that and get it going a lot faster, but um, sometimes kicker crazes paint. Um, and at this point, I don't want to be doing any more touch ups um, because I made a mistake. So I think that's in there now, so I can drop that piece, and I'm just going to leave this alone for a couple minutes and let that kind of set up and then I'll reinforce uh, that glue with another drop of glue on top of it and then I can start to uh, tension them out over in the directions that they need to go. So I'll be back in a minute for that stressful part. So I just realized uh, before I tension out those lines I need to add the prop spinners in here because after I get those in I'm not gonna be able to flip it over again in the jig or I can it's just not gonna be as secure. So um, I'm going to get the props going here, so I have them off to the side over here. I'm going to get those installed. That one in. Just want to make sure it's square and sitting at the right angle. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right. Since I already dropped this once, let's be very, 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 very careful. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right. Those are sitting right. Okay. And let those chill and set for a couple minutes and then I'll get back to the rigging. So we've got some buildup on this tip here. So if you get buildup on metal applicators, you can just take a flame and burn it off and it will just disappear. 
set. All right, so throw my little thing of super glue in here. Just a little bit on the tip of that exacto blade or needle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply this long run here instead. Okay, so that long run is gonna sit and chill for a minute. So I'm gonna let for that long run dry for a couple minutes and then I will apply, what I'll do is I'll let that go, I'll trim it and then we'll apply the the alter, or the uh, extra one in the middle there. So hurry up and wait. Okay, so I'm gonna trim this top run. I have a little bit of extra sitting over the cockpit here. So I'm just gonna get a very sharp knife, pull it taut. gently slice it like so so grab this find the intersection I wanted at get me some super glue get a nice bead of it on there Pretty fun, huh? Watching glue dry, basically. I might need some kicker for this, so I get some kicker. I have some kicker in a little tube down here. I have a little brush. <clears throat> kicker is just accelerator that helps the um, super glue dry a little bit faster. one of those instances where you need uh, more hands than you actually have. All right, that's secure at least, so that's a, that's a start. So what I can do in a minute is I can tighten that up uh, with a little bit of a trick. But what I'm gonna do while I have this kind of set is I'm gonna go and trim the excess so it's not putting too much tension downwards like so. All right, so that's dried. And what I wanna do now is I wanna cut that run as tight to the horizontal run as possible. So I got these these kind of little springy Japanese scissors that uh, my wife found for sewing. Um, and so I saw them and saw how they worked. I'm like, I gotta get a pair of these. So these are pretty cool scissors. All you gotta do is, you know, like this. Here we go. Whew. It's always stressful. Always stressful. Okay, so I have the. It's probably not going to focus because it's so fine, but that's what it looks like right now. So what I want to do is I want to tighten that bottom area up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up a needle with some fire. So I just have a needle, another needle in here. I use this for kind of just like various work. Just heating it up with a flame until it gets red hot. And then very carefully go underneath and it will tighten it out. So that's tightened down. Might go one more go here. Okay. So now I'm just gonna leave that alone. That's, that was just, aerial rigging is always stressful. And uh, yeah, that was, the same exact deal. So I'm gonna leave that, let that set up, and then uh, I'll finalize that a little bit. I need to do some touch-ups with the airbrush where I got some super glue in some areas. Uh, so I'll probably just give that a little bit of the brown color and then I'll flat it over so it blends in. But.
definitely call the aerial wire done. So now I just gotta be super careful that I don't like flip it upside down and break it and all that kind of stuff. So note to self, you need to stay like this. Okie doke. Okay, so I got the canopy installed off camera. It was just stressing me out so much that I just went and did it. Um, but it's in place. Um, I just used some super glue um, along the bottom sill got the uh, canopy in there, let it set up, and then um, I just kind of braced it with um, kind of a jerry rig of like clamps and stuff. I had to tape this up like this, so it would just kind of give it some support, but it's in there, nice and secure. And then there's a little bit of like, um, it's like a little like uh, piece of wire in there that's kind of like a, a hold for it as well on the real things. Um, but yeah, so that's final assembly done.